Continuing on with cage offensive tactics at the university, let's take a look at another takedown off the cage. Again, starting in our staging position, a PDA position. Working on the base, keeping him occupied, keeping him thinking about different things, knees to the thighs. Working my way into this position, which we talked about a couple different ways that one might do that in a previous video. Now that I'm here, and I've got him hiked up pretty well, maybe he's still pretty far upright. What I want to do is set up the ankle pick. So rather than just try to reach down and pull this out, you can see all of his remaining weight is on that foot. So it's going to be difficult for me to do. What I want to do is get some weight off of that foot. So from here, I'm just going to run this hand back here. I'm just going to run it forward. Now that he puts some, his hand on the mat, he puts some weight onto that hand, less weight on this foot. What I like to do now is come, while I'm still driving and keeping him pinned up against the cage, come down to the ankle, pull it up, and then bounce off the cage and pull it out. Keep this underhook. You'll notice I shifted my weight back. I don't want to fall in here. I like to stay here. And depending on what the rules are, if it's, if it's amateur, I've got punches here. If it's professional, I've got elbows here. And I'm on my way to passing. Okay, so coming in under, clearing that leg, and sliding up to whatever position you like inside control. So again, once, once I'm in PDA position and I'm working, and if I wind up in this position, if I put myself in this position, or he gives me this position, and I can't resist the temptation to step in, then I'm going to work on that ankle pick by, again, shifting his weight off of this leg, running this forward as much as I can. So he puts that hand down, grabbing the ankle. Now watch how I'm going to lift, drive, pull and try to keep that underhook as much as possible. Because when I let him go, then he's gonna get back, get his guard, get this knee across, have that whole game. But if I keep him here, I got good strikes quickly, and then I'm on my way to pass him. Yeah, I'd rather not follow him down either if I can help him. It's not a bad position, but I can't get good leverage on my strikes, I can get held up here. So I'm running here where I've got leverage, I've got gravity on my side at least for as we hit the ground. A few highlights from our cage offensive tactics, university PDA start position. Again, a comment on drilling. In order for you to really get your mind around these different techniques, and this technique in particular right now, I need him to play the role properly. Okay. There's lots of different ways he could shift his weight, different ways he could step, ways that would keep me from getting the ankle pick, but I need to drill when a person reacts a certain way with a certain weight shift. I need to do that multiple times to really start to be able to add that to my arsenal. So when I get in here, I need him to along somewhat. You know, keep his head down. If he's standing up really tall, and some guys are athletic and some guys are going to be able to do that, some guys you're not going to be able to butt forward quite as easily. Okay, it doesn't mean it's a bad technique necessarily, it just means that people respond differently. And there's, we all know there's more than one way to skin a cat. So perhaps, you know, against a guy who's quote unquote more athletic or impervious to this technique, then maybe I switch back to something else. But I want to practice this in anticipation of meeting that person that my destabilization will work with. So that head is down. Now I can start to work on running further forward, picking in, driving in, pulling it out. Keep everything pinched here, and start to bring that knee through. 